Hi guys, this is Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Today we're going to be making a card using the Fall Fairies digital, digital stamp set from Oddball Art Company. I am having so much fun with these cute images from Oddball Art Company. For today's card, I printed out several of the images onto some Michael's 65 pound cardstock. Then I colored them up with my Spectrum Noir markers. Now with pumpkins, I am using most of the oranges that I have in my stash. I'm starting off with OR1, I believe, for the lightest color, and then, because um, that's what I'm going to be blending everything out with. Then I'm going in with the darkest, which was B. BO4 and BO3. Now the reason I'm combining regular orange with burnt orange is just that I think that the burnt oranges give a deeper tone to those crevices of the pumpkin. Now I, I have to say I do love pumpkins. Um, I don't really do pumpkin pie. I don't eat them, anything like that. But for Halloween, they are absolutely perfect. Um, I've done some paper mache um, jack-o'-lanterns a few years back, and that was just too much fun. They turned out so cool, and at some point I'll have to share a photo of that over on my Facebook group for you guys to see. But this little guy, a lot of what I'm doing here I took straight from what I learned about doing a paper mache pumpkin and painting that. The darker tones need to go in those crevices, darkest at the center, lightens out a little bit as you go out so that you've got that rounded shape. Um, so I actually went through lightest, well, the lightest color as a base, and then the darker tones. And then after I got done with everything going back to light, I went back in with the dark tones to deepen those lines a bit more. For the stem of the pumpkin, I just combined some of the dull green and citrus green colors. Not really trying to do a whole lot of shading, but did try to give a little bit of dimension there. For the little ghost, I used those same greens for the leaf that he's holding. And then I just grabbed the IG-1, which is one of my lightest gray markers, to give a little bit of shading um, for the little ghost. Now, I'm not real good at this. The When I first got my markers, I think the blender may have been just completely dry. <laughs> I'm not sure. But since I've refilled it, it does seem to work out better. But that just means that I have had less time to practice doing those lighter blends, like with the gray. Then I went on to the fairy. Now I'm not real good on the coloring of the hair or anything like that. I do try to do a little better each time when I'm coloring such, but this time I'm basically going in with one of the darker tones. I'm using TN9 um, for some of the I guess strands of hair so that you can see kind of the de definition. And then I went in with TN1 to give kind of a lighter shape. My thought process at the beginning was that I was going to have her with lighter hair. Um, as time goes on though, I do continue to add a little bit darker and a little bit darker and the final dark sh shade that I'm using, and you can see each of those little lines, is going to be in the TN1. I'm sorry, in TN9 <laughs> the, for the darkest. After getting kind of a base coat down, I'm going back in again with that TN9, the darkest shade, and doing a flicking motion to try to give, I don't know, a little bit more depth to the hair. Um, this is one of the areas that I need to do a lot more practicing on, which means I'm not good at explaining it either. Uh, but I do think that she turned out pretty good in the end. And then you see I decided to go ahead and grab one of the other family of markers. This is the EB family and use some of the darker ones. This one is EB5 to darken up her hair even more. Since she doesn't have quite as much definition in her hair as I'd like, I went ahead and grabbed my new Micron um, pens to see if that would help. But I started off with the brown, but I really couldn't see that much of a difference. So I grabbed the black one and put in a few strands of hair here and there that I think it gives it a lot better definition. Then I went on to her wings in some pink and blended those out with my um, colorless blender. Thank you. 
For her skin, I'm going to do a little bit of experimentation. I've seen purple used for the darkest shades and to get a good shadow, but I haven't tried it before, mostly because I don't really like the, um, the purple markers that I've got. So I'm starting off with the HB1 for the dark tone, and then I'm blending it out with different flesh tones, um, the FS family. And the purple blended out really, really well, I think, when I started using the FS7, which is a bit darker than what I usually use. I decided to use the darkest hibiscus color, HB3, for her eyes and to start off the darkest color for her little overalls that she's wearing. So I'm going um, darkest to lightest, so I'm going next with HB2 to blend out some of that darker color, and then I'll bring in HB1 as the lightest tone. I wanted some darker color for her shoes, a little different color of purple, so I went with LV3 as the darkest and LV1 as the lightest. Uh, you know I've said before that I don't really like the blending of, of these two markers with LV2 because LV2 is just brownish. So I use the touch the tip to the end of the darker marker to blend these out and they turned out a lot darker than I expected. Then I went in with the AP family for all of the uh, her little shirt. Next I'm going to do some foiling on that um, sentiment that we've got there. This one it says it's fall y'all and I created a cut file to go around it before printing it out. So I'm just going ahead and trimming up some rose gold foil. I thought that would be really pretty for that. Only thing is for this specific set of, of printouts I printed them out on my inkjet paper uh, printer not on my laser jet so that means I have to prep the image in order for me to be able to foil over it because you can't foil on ink so what I'm doing is I'm taking a deco foil pen and putting a lot of the um, fluid that's in it on my glass mat and then I'm just taking this what's that thing called this is a Fantastics. I'm taking a Fantastics and dipping that into that liquid and then I'm drawing the little leaves for my um, for my image here. And then I'm going to run all of that through my laminator with that um, laminating foil on there and we'll see how that turns out. I haven't tried this one before so you guys are getting to see my first attempt using the Fantastics to do this. Now the reason I did that is the um, <coughs> the nib on my deco foil pen maybe it's just that it's old and i hadn't used it in enough time but it's really thick and it's really gummy with that liquid so this was pretty much the only way i could get a smaller amount out so let's go ahead and do the reveal and see how it turned out So that turned out pretty good. Um, it is a little chunky in some places because the Fantastic didn't do a final line. Plus, I couldn't really see where it was I was drawing. So I ran everything through my scan and cut to cut everything out. And what I'm taking out here is something that I just discovered on Christina Werner's site. She has done um, basically a file that has all the different mat sizes that you could need whenever you're creating a card. Now she has this for A2, A7, and for slim lines. So I decided to go ahead and print all those out, laminate them, and then I've got them on hand for whenever I need them. And instead of me trying to calculate in my head what the correct size is. So you see this card is basically already cut to the exact size that I need. 
by the way, this panel that I'm using is one of my least favorites from that group of different panels that I created using my jelly plate experimentation, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. I mentioned it on a previous video. Um, I think it looks pretty good, though, as a background for this card. So I just arranged all of my little things on there the way that I want them, and I'll start off by just adhering the It's Fall Y'all sentiment on there using my dot liner adhesive. I decided that I wanted the pumpkin and fairy to be popped up a little bit on the front of this card, so I'm using my my Arteza foam tape, and I'm using my craft pick again to try to get that release plastic off the back. I'm still struggling with this, but I am starting to get a little bit better with it. So first I'll just get it off of the pumpkin and put him in place, and then I'll add some to the back of the fairy. Now I'm going to go ahead and pop up the main panel. One thing I've noticed with this foam tape is it is a bit thin, so layering a couple of pieces up isn't going to be that big of a deal. And I also discovered quite by accident, because of course I am just getting frustrated, that maybe if I get it pressed down real well, and then I decide I'm going to go ahead and burnish the tape as well, maybe that'll make it easier for me to get the darn... <laughs> darn plastic off and it seems to be working better now at this point I go ahead and slow the video down to actual live so you'll be able to see how quickly I was able to get it off after burnishing it that is a tip for you that's why I'm sharing that I have had so much trouble with this over the last couple of weeks using this tape that now I know you have to burnish it well in order to get the plastic off And I was even able to kind of sort of create a couple of little um, handles for me to be able to position the panel on there better. Now it is a little more difficult to work with because of it being those plastic flaps there instead of being um, a flat and straight piece of uh, paper, but it is working out okay. I think this fairy is just too stinking cute, but you know me, I do have to add a little bit more to my card. So I went ahead and grabbed my um, autumn red color in Nouveau Drops again and added a few dots here and there on the front of the card, and that finishes up this card for today. I hope that you are inspired to get going on your Halloween crafting, and I would love to see what you create. So come join my Facebook group, Crafting with Debbie, and show us your creations. I've left a link in the description box down below. Oh, and if you make anything using ideas from one of my Halloween videos, please post a picture and tag me at hashtag DebbieJ's Crafting Corner and at hashtag DJCC Halloween 2020. You can also see all of my Halloween videos for 2020 by clicking on the hashtag hashtag DJCC Halloween 2020 down in the video title. Here are some other videos that you may be interested in. Thank you so much for dropping by and remember if I can make it you can too.